Right, we are now proceeding to question 3.2, which is Sky-Fi Greeks Limited. The business trades in electronic equipment purchased from China. The information relates to the past two financial years and the 31st March. The COVID-19 lockdown has negatively affected sales over the current financial year. So we are required here. We are required 3.2.1, liquidity. The directors are satisfied with the improvement in the current ratio and the asset test ratio. Explain why you would disagree with them. Quote two financial indicators in your, respect, in your response. So liquidity, remember liquidity, we have got quite a number of ratios or well, financial indicators which falls under liquidity. There is a current ratio, there is asset test ratio, there is stock turnover rate, there is average debtors collection period, there is average creditors payment period, there is stock holding period. So now if you look at this question, which is 3.2.1, it says the directors are satisfied with the improvement in the current ratio and the asset test ratio. So they are looking at liquidity only in two ratios, which is current ratio and the asset test ratio, of which there are quite a number of financial indicators which falls under liquidity. So we need to look deep as to why we, we will agree, we disagree with them. Explain why you will disagree with them. If you look at information A in your question paper there, there is current ratio which is given there, and current ratio improved from 1,1 .1 is to 1 to 2,4 is to 1, which is uh, not a very uh, good improvement. Stockhold asset test ratio improved from 0 0,4 is to 1 to 1, 1,0 is to 1, which is an improvement of 0 0,6. But if we have to quote other financial indicators, that will make us to disagree with, with, the, with, with, with the directors is the stockholding period. If you look at the stockholding period, the stockholding period, the stockholding period, because we don't want to only focus on the current ratio and asset test ratio and then claim that there is an improvement in the liquidity position of the business, the ability of the business to pay for the current debts for the short term debts. If you look at the stockholding period, the stock holding period increased from 32 days to 102 days. The stock holding period increased from 32 days to 102 days, which is not good for a business. We don't want a, a situation whereby the business will keep stock for such a long period of time. If you look at the, 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 the increase, the stock, the stock holding period was 32 days at the beginning of the year, and now we are closing with 102 days. So the stock holding period has increased, which may then result to what? This may result to stock piling. too much cash which is tied up in stock. So this increase may result to, remember what can happen to a situation whereby this stock may become obsolete or this stock the customers may no longer want. If we keep stock for too long, we are running at a risk that the stock may become obsolete and you will find that we will no longer be able to sell that stock. And then therefore we then run out of cash. Another financial indicator that we may also cause to disagree with, 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 with the directors about the improvement in liquidity is the average debtors collection period. Average debtors collection period. Average debtors collection period. But how do we collect our monies from the people who are owing us? If you look at the average debtors collection period, in 2020, the debtors' average collection period increased from 31 days to 46 days. Average debtors' collection period increased 
from 31 days to 46 days. The average data collection period increased from 31 days to 41, 46 days, which is not good for us as the business because if we were collecting on average from our data, from the people who are owing us, if we were collecting on average after 31 days, that was good for us. So now if this has increased to 46 days, it is an indication now that our data are now taking too long to pay us. And that will, that will also result to the business having a liquidity problem because we may run out of cash if our data are not paying us on time. Right, let us then proceed to question 3.2.2. I hope we are all clear with the, the, the liquidity one, which is 3.2.1. We are now proceeding to 3.2.2. 3.2.2 is talking about the dividends. Remember, when the shareholders buy shares from the company, their main aim is to get dividends from the company. So dividends is an income to the shareholders, but to us as the business, remember when we are doing accounting, we, we are on the side of the business. To us as the business, dividends is an expense. So we are looking at 3.2 where it is said here, the directors change the dividend policy from the current financial year. So the distribution of profits, because dividends is mainly the distribution of profits to the shareholders. So it was changed, the directors changed the dividend policy from the current financial year. And our first question on 3.2.2, it says, comment on the dividend per share over the two years, code figures. So I always advise students that you need to make sure that when you see this thing which says code figures, it's a clear indication that the figures are provided in your question paper. So there is no need for you to leave a blank space. So if we are asked to quote figures, to comment on the dividend per share over the two years, it means we need to look at the dividends for 2020 and also look at the dividends for 2021. And if you look at information A again in your question paper, it is clearly indicated there that in 2020, the dividends per share was 90 cents and in 2021, the dividends per share is now 72 cents, which is telling us that there has been a decrease. So dividends per share decreased. Dividends per share Dividends per share decreased from it was dividends per share decreased from 90 cents in 2020 to 72 cents. It decreased from 90 cents to 72 cents. And you get your full marks. Because you were, the question was just asking you to comment on the dividend per share. And this is a comment that the dividends per share, they have decreased from 90 cents in 2020 to 72 cents in 2021. And then there is a follow-up question to this one from the question paper which says explain the change in the dividend payout rate and give a reason for this change. Code figures. Explain the change in the dividend payout rate and give a reason for this change. Code figures. If you go again to your information A that is provided there, you will see that there is a dividend payout rate this, that has already been calculated for you. And even the change is there. If you look at 2020, the dividend payout rate was 69%. And in 2021, the dividend payout rate is now 136.5%. So the dividend payout rate increased. Dividend payout rate increased from 69% to from 69% to it increased from to 136.5% 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 to 136.5%
to say. Now, this is where some of, of, of the learners get confused because if you look at the dividends per share, the dividends per share decreased from 90 cents to 72 cents. But if you look at the payout rate, the payout rate increased from 69% to 136.5%. One needs to remember that when you are calculating the payout rate, it is dividends per share over earnings per share times 100. So therefore, if there is a change in the earnings per share, your dividends per share might have decreased. But if there was a change in earnings per share, you will find that your payout rate has increased. Like if you look at, 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 at what is provided in information here, A here, your earnings per share, our earnings per share, let's go and search for earnings per share. Earnings per share was 130 cents in 2020. And earnings per share went down to 58 cents. So because of this decrease in the earnings per share, it then resulted to an increase in the payout rate from 69% to 136.5%. And give a reason for this change. But what might have been a reason behind the directors deciding to increase the payout rate, deciding to increase the payout rate from 69% to 136.5%. And the reason might be, there might be so many reasons. But if you look at the profitability of the company, if you look at the percentage net profit before tax on sales, it was 20.3% and it went down to 13.9%. The profitability of the company has decreased. Which then tells us that there is something that the company is not doing well. So the reason for increasing this payout rate, it might be the directors. Directors were attempting to please the shareholders. Considering that profitability has decreased. You see, if, 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 if the profitability of the company is going down, the company is uh, will be having a risk that it may lose some of the shareholders. So, in an attempt to keep the shareholders, this might have the, reason, the, 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 the reason why the directors have decided to increase the payout rate from 69% to 136.5%. Because the directors were attempting to please the shareholders, considering profitability of the company has decreased, considering that it has decreased. So, they wanted to make the shareholders happy. They wanted to keep the shareholders by ensuring that they increase their dividends. Right. But there is also another point C there under 3.2.2. Point C, it says, a shareholder felt that they should be satisfied with the dividends they received as it is better than last year. Now, this question might be a bit confusing, but why? The shareholder, they, they should be satisfied with the dividend as it is better than last year. But if you look at the dividends per share, last year it was 90 cents. And then now in the current financial year, it is 72 cents. But this question is claiming that the shareholder felt that they should be satisfied with the dividends they received as it is better than last year. Explain why you agree with you. So now we have to explain why we should agree with him by quoting figures. You see, if we, if, if we look at the percentage payout rate of 69%, and you look at the earnings per share, the earnings per share, the earnings per share for the previous year was 130 cents. Let me take out my calculator so that 
we do calculate by request that you all take out your calculator so that we do this calculation we do this calculation so in the previous year this 69 percent if you take the earnings per share of 130 cents 130 and you multiply it by 69 percent by 69 percent you will get the 90 cent dividend that was paid in the previous year so if the company had maintained the very same 69 percent in the current year if you look at the earnings per share now that the earnings per share is 58 cents if you look at the earnings per share eps of 58 cents and you multiply it by the 69 percent if you look at the earnings per share of 58 cents and you multiply if they had kept the same percentages last year 58 multiplied by 69 over 100 multiplied by 69 percent that it's 40 cents so dividends per share for the current year could have been 40 cents if they had kept the 69 percent from last year so that is why we are agreeing with, 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 with the shareholder who feels that they should be satisfied with this dividend because if it went down from 90 cents to 72 cents for if, if they didn't change the payout rate of 69 percent to 136 0.5 percent they would have got 40 cents so that is why we are agreeing we agree that the dps is better than last year and this calculation is a proof that it is better than last year that because if it is 72 cents, if they had kept the 69 percent, they would have got only 40 cents. Right, we are now proceeding to 3.2.3. 3.2.3, we are required to comment on the risk and gearing. Remember, there was an option in, in 3.1 which was talking about risk and gearing, and that risk and gearing was matching with E, how is the company managing loans of borrowed capital? We want to look at that. If we are looking at the risk and care, we want to see how is this company managing loans and how is this company benefiting from the borrowed money. So comment on the risk and gearing for both years. Go to financial indicators with figures. So the first financial indicator that we look to quote here is the debt equity ratio. Debt equity ratio, which deals with the risk. The first financial indicator that we need to quote here is the debt equity ratio. If you look at information A and you look at the debt equity ratio, the risk, the risk has increased. The debt equity ratio increased from 0.3 is to 1 to 0.4 is to 1. Debt equity ratio increased from 0.3 is to 1 to, to 0.4 is to 1. It is very important to quote pickers. Very important to quote pickers because by quoting the debt equity ratio, you will get a mark for that. And also quoting the trend, that is another two marks for figures. So it is very important to ensure that when you are quoting the financial indicator, you also quote figures. So the debt equity ratio has increased from 0 0.3 is to 1 to 0, which then tells us that the risk has increased, which also tells us that the company took a new loan because. By the debt equity ratio increasing, it's telling us that we took a new loan. But let us then look at the return. Where are we investing the money? Are we getting a better return for this amount? That the money that we borrow, are we investing it correctly? Are we getting a good return? So we then need to quote the return on total capital employed. 
return on total capital employed. And there is an accepted abbreviation for this return on total capital employed, which is ROTCE. The return on total capital employed. We want to know the money that we borrow from the bank, are we investing it correctly? Are we getting a good return from that money? If you look at the return on total capital employed, if you look at the return on total capital employed, the return on total capital employed has decreased from 39% to 23.2%. Decreased from 39%. Return on total capital employed decreased from 39%. It decreased from 39% to 23.2%. It decreased from 39% to 23.2%, which is a worrying factor because our risk has increased from 0.3, which tells us that we took another loan. But yet, where we invest the, the borrowed money, we are not getting a good return. The return is going down. The return on total capital growth has decreased from 39% to 23%, which then tells us that borrowed money, borrowed money is not used effectively. This is telling us that borrowed money is not used effectively to increase the return. Or to increase profitability of the business. Borrowed money is not used effectively. What is it? The risk has increased. If you look at the debt equity ratio, the risk has increased from 0 0.3 is to 1 to 0 0.4 is to 1. Is to one, which tells us that we have increased the loan. But we would ex one would expect that if you increase the loan, even the return from where you are investing that borrowed money should increase. But the return on total capital employed has decreased from 39% to 23.2%, which is then telling us that the borrowed money is not used in fact. Right? We are then proceeding to 3.4. 3.2.4 3.2.4 Existing shareholders are dissatisfied that the new shares issued on the 1st of April 2020 were sold to the CEO. You need to underline that, that these shares were sold to the CEO, Ida Shah. Give two reasons why you consider their feelings to be justified, quote figures, for six months. Maybe the first thing that we need to do in this question is to try and establish the price at which these new shares were issued. Because the existing shareholders are not happy. They are dissatisfied that the new shares issued on the 1st of April were sold to the CEO. So these shares were sold to the chief executive officer. So if you look at information B, we are getting the number of shares that were issued there. On the 1st of April 2020, the company issued an additional 250,000 shares. The total number of shares is 250,000. And if you go down to information C, if you go to information C, in the extract from the cash flow statement on the 31st of, you can see the money that we receive out of that sale. If you go down the information C, you will see that there is sale of shares. The sale of shares is 375,000. Let's start by doing that calculation. The total amount that we received is 375,000 out of the sale, and the total number of shares that were sold is 250,000 shares. So it will be 375,000 divided by 250. The amount received divided, let us go to our calculation so that we get the exact price. So we have 375,000, you divide it by 250,000. And the answer is 150. So this shares 
were issued at 150 cents. These new shares were sold for 150 cents and they were sold to the CEO. And the existing shareholders are not happy with this decision. And we want to establish as to why. Let us look at the price at which the new shares, at the shares are sold in the market. Let us look at the price, the market price of the shares on the stock exchange. If you look at the market price on the stock exchange, it is 410 cents. Now we can see the reason why the existing shareholders are not here. Because if these shares had been sold to the stock exchange, they had been sold on the market, they would have gone for 410 cents. So we are therefore saying that the company is losing out. These shares could have been sold for 410 cents on the market. Company is losing out. Now we can see the reason as to why the existing shareholders are not happy with this decision that these new shares were issued to the CEO and then they were issued for 150 cents. This, this, this. If you look at this one, it means that the CEO has now benefited at the expense of the company because if these shares could have been sold in the stock market, they would have been sold for 410 cents, for 410 cents and which then tells us that the company is losing out. And therefore, we are concerned that the CEO is using his position to manipulate So the second point might be that we, we are content that the CEO is using his position to manipulate the company to his benefit, which is unethical. So that is why we, we are therefore saying that we, we, we concur with the existing shareholders who are not happy with, with these shares that were sold for 150 cents. So I hope this question is clear to everyone. These shares were sold for 150 cents and they could have been sold for 410 cents. So we are content that the CEO is using his position to manipulate the company to his benefit, which is unethical. 3.2.5, which is the last question in question 3. 3.2.5, it says the cash flow statement reflected a positive change of 980,000. Provide two points why this should still be a concern to the director's code figures. The cash flow statement, if you look at the cash flow statement in information C, it is showing that the net change is showing an improvement. That the net change has now improved. Even last year it was 510, and the net change for the current year is 980. So everybody is supposed to be happy that the net change has improved. But it is said in 3.2.5, the cash flow expected a positive change of narrative. Provide two points why this should be a concern to me. But there is a concern. Directors are concerned about this improvement, about this net change of 980,000. And if you look at Tara to information C, their concern is justified because if you look at the cash flows from operating activities, they have a negative amount of 148,008. Cash flows from operating activities It's 148,080 and is a negative amount, which 
then tells us that the operating activities are not benefiting the company, of which this is where we are supporting, we are supposed to be getting a lot of money. So, but the money that we, 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 we ended up for, from the operating activities, we ended up with a negative amount, which is showing us that the company is not doing well. That is why, even though there is this positive change of 980,000, but the shareholders still, the directors are concerned that this is not good. And even if you, when you look at this, at, 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 at the financing activities, cash flows from financing activities, and specifically in the change in loan, the loan was increased by 651,500. Loan increased. by 651,500. So it means this positive change of 980, we look as if the company is doing well with this positive change of 980, but the actual fact is that we are not doing well. When that is why the directors are concerned, because if the operating activities have got a negative answer of one, point, it means we did not get anything from operating activity. And this a positive change is mainly financed by the loan that we took out of 651,000. So, which is a risk to the business that we are not getting enough from operating activities and yet we are now mainly dependent on loans. And this, remember, this loan attracts a lot of interest which might also affect us a lot in the future. So, this brings us to an end of question three which was based on the interpretation of financial statements. What is concerning is that most students, they do not answer these questions, of which that is where they can score a lot of marks from this section. They only believe in attempting the questions where there is only calculations, but where you need to interpret the question and give the correct response. And you will find that in most of these questions, the answers are provided in the question paper. So we are encouraging you students to ensure that you do attempt to do this question and you have a clear understanding of all these concepts, these accounting concepts relating to companies. You must have a clear understanding when it comes to dividends, that there is a dividend per share, there is also a dividend payout rate. You should be able to calculate the dividend payout rate. And the formula is clear, it is DPS over EPS times 100. You should also be able to understand that when we talk of liquidity, we are not talking of current ratio only and asset test ratio. There are also other financial indicators which falls under liquidity. We made mention of the stockholding period, the stock turnover rate which goes under there. There is also the data collection period. There is also average capital payment period. So you need to be clear when it comes to the liquidity of the liquidity ratios of, of the business. And another thing maybe to emphasize on in this question is the issue of risk and gearing. This question is always in the exam, in, in the exam, and people, they need to begin to understand now. When you're talking about risk, there is only one financial indicator of assessing risk, there is that is debt equity ratio, and then you look at gearing, you are looking at the return on total capital employed. And in most cases, you may be asked to indicate whether the, 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 the gearing is positive or negative. How do you see that the gearing is positive or the gearing is negative? You look at the interest on loan. If the interest on loan, let me make an example. If I borrow the money from the bank, I take a loan, and then the interest rate on the loan is 11%. But where I'm going to invest the borrowed money, I'm going to be getting a return of 28%. That will be indicating a positive gearing for the business because if the return that I'm going to be getting is more than interest, so there is positive gearing. But if you borrow money at an interest rate of 11% and the return that you are getting is only 9%, is even less than the interest. So that is not a good decision to borrow that, that money because you are running at a loss and therefore the gearing will be regarded as a negative gear. And in most cases when you are asked a question which is based on the price at which new shares were issued, if you are asked a question which is based on the price, 
whether you are happy with the price at which the sales were sold or you, 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 you are unhappy about the price. You need to compare. The first thing that you need to do, you compare the net asset value per share and the market price. If I can make an example by taking this cell phone. If this cell phone is sold, let's say for 3,000 rands in the market, and then I decide, and the value of the cell phone, let's say the value of the cell phone again is 3,000 rand and it's sold for 3,000 rand, which means if I can apply the ratios, the NAV of this phone is 3,000 rand and even the market price is 3,000 rand. So if I then decide to sell it for 1,005 and one person will be asking, is this person happy with the price at which the cell phone was sold? The answer will be very clear that no, he will not be happy because 1,500 is less than the value of the cell phone and it is even less than the price at which this cell phone is sold on the market, which is the market price. So in most cases, when you are asked a question which relates to the price at which new shares were issued, you need to make sure that you quote the value, you look at the value, which is the NAV, the net asset value per share, and you look at the market price. And then lastly, um, based on the cash flow statement, it, it, what we are getting from 3.2.5 is that you, you, you don't have just to look at, at the amount and like here, there has been a positive change of 980,000. But you need to go deep as to where this 980,000 came from. Because now if you look at the operating activities, the operating activities, we did not get anything. There is a negative amount of 148. So we can see that the positive contribution towards this 980 was that we took a loan. And we understand that taking a loan will sometimes affect us in the future because it attracts a lot of interest. So, so that is why we were saying, even though there is a positive change, but the directors are still concerned. Because the business is not making money from the operating activities and is now becoming to be dependent on, on the loans. So this brings us to an end of question, of question 3, which is taken from uh, the accounting paper 1 November 2020 in brackets 2. So thank you very much.